Shalom. Let's have a discussion. These scriptures, nowhere in these scriptures does it talk about anybody being the people of Almighty Yah except for the Hebrews, the Israelites. That's it. Nobody else. Right? It also says that there should be a light unto the nations and by all other nation by by them all other nations will be blessed right that's what scripture says who are the hebrews who are the israelites right well let's see abraham was a hebrew isaac jacob his son right jacob was later renamed israel he had 12 sons the 12 tribes of Israel and their lineage, right? Their children are the Israelites, right? That's the people. Nobody else. No Christians. No Muslims. None of that. You don't see any of those uh, religions in here, any of those denominations, Baptists, Methodist, any of that. None of that's in here. So, what is in here, well, you might say, well, uh, I don't know if I'm one of the many generations of one of the sons of the of Israel, right? You don't know. And that was a question I had when I first came to this understanding, right? And the real thing of it is this. In Romans 10, it talks about the grafting in of the olive tree. And if you're not one of the home-born Israelites, home-born Hebrews, it talks about you being a wild branch, right? Of a wild olive tree, right? This goes back to uh, all nations being blessed through Abraham's seed, right? So, and it says in Romans 10, I'm going to start in verse 16. Now, if the first fruit is set apart, the lump is also. And if the root is set apart, so are the branches, right? And if some of the branches were broken off, Israel was scattered. Right, and you being a wild olive tree have been grafted in among them and came to share the root and the fatness of the olive tree so you're not here to take it over and call it whatever your denomination is or whatever your religion is right share the root and the fatness of the olive tree you are a wild olive tree and have been grafted in, right? Do not boast against the branches. And if you boast, remember, you do not bear the root, but the root bears you. You shall say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. You hear some of that. But here it says, good but unbelief by unbelief they were broken off and you stand by belief do not be arrogant but fear for if Elohim Almighty Yah did not spare the natural branches he might not spare you either See then the kindness and shortness of Almighty Yah on those who fail shortness, but towards you kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also shall be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, the branches that was broken off of the original tree, if they do not continue in unbelief, sh 
If they do not continue in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Almighty Yah is able to graft them in again. Right? So I watched a video a couple days ago where a preacher was saying, Well, this ain't for you. These rules, these laws, they're not for you. You're not Israel. Thinking to myself, well, then the covenant is not with you. The promise is not with you. The faith is not with you, right? How can you say that you have faith in Almighty Yah, but you're not Israel? His people are Israel, right? And the reason, I believe this was a Christian pastor, the reason that they don't recognize this is because they say this guy or this, this woman especially was saying we don't have to worry about those laws because we're not Israel. We're the new the new people. But I don't see Christians anywhere in this scripture book. I see Hebrews and Israel which is the same thing. Right? You're either grafted in or you're a pagan. And that's the truth of the matter. You know. Israel. Keeps commandments. They keep the Sabbath. Keep the feast days. And we hold this book. To our heart. Right. We stand on this word. They keep. Holidays. Pagan holidays. And. They stand on whatever they want. Whatever they feel like that day. Whatever they feel like doing, saying, whoever they feel like being. Wishy-washy, come and go. Go into the church house. You're there all day. There for a few hours. You leave, you go do whatever it was in your mind that you thought to do before you even went in there. So what? what's the difference? Here's the thing. It says Israel can be grafted in again. It says you stand on belief. That's why you grafted in, right? But I read something a little while ago in Jeremiah. Yahoo. And this is what it says. Knowing that there's only one people through who through all the nations will be blessed because they are able to be grafted into that people. One law for the homeborn and he who so sojourns with him, right? Knowing that, reading this one scripture, Jeremiah 31, 36. If these laws banish from before me, declares Almighty Yah, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. You can't claim to be of this book and at the same time teach lawlessness. It's not what this book says. And that's the truth of the matter. We got to get into this word pray for understanding and read this word really trying to grasp the concept which Almighty Yah is trying to tell us he said come back to me you were with me at once come back to me it says in in the same book in the same chapter Jeremiah 31 and verse 18 it says I have clearly heard Ephraim lamenting right Ephraim is one of the tribes that was dispersed it says I have clearly heard Ephraim lamenting what is Ephraim saying you have chastised me and I was chastised like an untrained calf turn me back and I shall turn back for you or almighty Yah my Elohim. 
For after my turning back, I repented. And afterward, and after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh. I was ashamed, even humiliated, for I bore the reproach of my youth. When you gain understanding and you come into this faith, and you realize that everything that you were taught about these scriptures in any church denomination, whatever you was in prior to coming into the truth, is a lie, you're ashamed. Humiliated. And you bear the reproach of your youth. Because you know that everything you did to the point where you started trying to keep Torah was a disgrace in the Father's eyes. And everything you taught your children before that was a disgrace in the Father's eyes. So, and just for a little, a little word here to maybe brighten the the day it says, Ephraim is a precious son. Is I Ephraim a precious son to me, a child of delights? For though I spoke against him, I still remembered him. That is why my affections were deeply moved for him. And I have great compassion for him, declares Almighty Yah. Repent. Turn back to the Torah. Start keeping these, these days, these feast days, these Sabbath days. They were given to you for rest. Sabbath was given to man. So that you may rest from the work that you do continuously. Six days of the week. Listen to this. The same chapter, the same, the same book. Jeremiah 31. Listen to what he says right here. In verse 33, it says, For this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel, Israel after those days, declares Almighty Yah. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts, and write it on their hearts. And I shall be their Elohim. And they shall be my people. And no longer. Shall they teach each one his neighbor. And each one his brother. Saying no almighty Yah. For they shall all know me. From the least of them. To the greatest of them. Declares almighty Yah. For I shall forgive their crookedness. And remember their sins no more. Why? Because the Torah is on your heart. That's why. Shalom, shalom.